Jim, we're speaking on Wednesday morning, morning after the election. Um, thought we might have uh, some conclusion to talk about, but uh, what we've got instead is uncertainty. Uh, and the remarkable thing to me is that at least in this early going, the, uh, the stock market seems to be doing fairly well. That, that, that is surprising to me because, you know, we've had, you know, these under, um, you know, under the table predictions of chaos and, you know, Ryan and what what will happen this this uh, this week? And I don't think those predictions will come true. But apparently, neither does the stock market. Well, there's so there's you know, maybe some degree of chaos. We've got these counts continuing in you know in Pennsylvania yeah. and others other states uh, could go uh, could go for days. Um, and you know the the old saw is the market hates uncertainty. So uh, you know trying to trying to figure out uh, what what it what it means that, that the market sees this as a as a positive result. I I, I have no idea. You know I, I think we can start drawing a few minor conclusions at this point. Yeah. 10, 10 a.m. on Wednesday, it doesn't look like the Democrats will take the Senate. Right. And but but the but the uh, the Democrats will keep the House, which means continued divided government no matter who wins the White House. And, you know, right now the pandemic is taking off and rising, and that's a danger to the economy. We haven't been able to get a stimulus bill agreed to by the House and the Senate for months. Yeah, yeah. And I'm starting to think that that gridlock will continue. With what, what do you think? Well, historically, divided government, you know, the, uh, the party controlling the presidency, not having complete control of Congress, that's been good for the economy and generally good for, for, for markets. Um, that's the, the, uh, the, the logic is that uh, no, neither party can take things to extreme. We'll get, you know, we'll get kind of middle of the road government and, and, and compromise. Um, so so uh, yeah, that's been a, you know, been a positive in, in the past, which maybe the market's looking at uh, this morning. Um, but in, in the current context, the big issue on everyone's mind is: Are we going to get more stimulus, more you know, another relief package, which is uh, you know, which is sorely needed? Um, and uh, th this result uh, would seem to uh, seem to lessen the chances of that. Oh uh, yeah, yes, and uh, you know, the Federal Reserve has been crying for one yes. for the relief package, saying it's really necessary, and I think it is, especially as the pandemic gets worse. The only hope here is that now that the election is over, maybe both sides, you know, the House and the Senate will be amenable to compromise. Uh, the, the problem on, on the Senate side, I, I think, with the compromise was they couldn't get a majority of Republican senators yeah. uh, to, uh, to agree to a stimulus package because they would say, you know, their opponents, you know, their opponents on the right, on the right, would say, you know, you're raising the deficit some more. But I don't know, with, with all those senators looking two years down the road, maybe there's more ability to compromise. Certainly Biden would, would be willing to compromise. I, I don't know. Oh, no, no, he, he would, he, he is you know, clearly in, in favor of, 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 more, of more, more stimulus. And President Trump has also been, been uh, pushing for an agreement that would, uh, he wanted something before the election to, to, to show to voters and he didn't get it. Um, so that, yeah, that's, that's, that's the short term issue, uh, the, you know, longer term, uh, you know, kind of what does this, you know, what does divided government mean for either, either uh, Joe Biden's tax plan for entrant, for instance, yeah. or, you know, or, you know, Donald Trump's economic agenda for that matter. Well, it means that Biden's tax plan is dead, which is probably also one of the reasons that, uh, that the stock market is up, up, up because he wanted to raise taxes on the rich and corporations. Uh, so, you know, corporate profits just got a little bit safer over the last 24 hours. It would seem, you know, unless a surprise happens and the Democrats do take the Senate, it seems very unlikely at this moment. Yes, yeah, it yeah. does. No, no, that, that's, that's a good point. I think, uh, you know, you know I, I wouldn't say Biden's tax plan is dead, but he's clearly going to have to compromise on, on some of the more uh, you know, more controversial elements, including, you know, his, his proposal to hike corporate taxes. Yeah. Well, that, he won't get anything through a Republican Senate. There, there is no chance no, of getting no. any, any Republican to vote for a tax increase on either corporations or the wealthy. So I don't know. <laughs> you know, on, on the state level, we have Governor Parson reelected handily. Yes. 
Yep. And uh, and uh, of course, you know, the, the voters of the state passed Proposition Three, which makes gerrymandering easier, which makes uh, you know preserves the ability of politicians now in office to draw their districts in a way that, that will yeah. keep them in office. <laughs> so we're, we're going to have conservative government going on. And this flies in the face of the voters decision earlier to expand Medicaid. Both the legislature and Parson oppose the expansion of Medicaid, but now they're allegedly going to have to well, do they're, it. They're obliged to carry it out. And I, and I think the Medicaid expansion will be, will be good for the state's economy. It definitely, you know, it's definitely good for the uh, the healthcare sector, oh, and sure. uh, you know, and and uh, particularly rural hospitals, but even even the the, the St. Louis hospitals will, will you know get some uh, some new income from this, and that yeah, it's a big part of the of the state's economy. Sure, it brings in a couple of billion dollars in federal spending to the state, right. and also it makes basically the working poor healthier because they'll actually be able to yeah. go to doctors. Um, but well, you know, but, you have people who oppose Medicaid expansion now in charge of doing it. Well, they try to undermine it in little ways. You know, the the Parson administration has been throwing people off Medicaid for the last couple of years. Yeah, yeah. So you know, I don't, I don't know. That's yeah, the the, you know, the way they the way they uh, implement it could could make a difference. I agree. But we we, we shouldn't uh, close without mentioning that all of this political uncertainty comes on top of the uncertainty caused by the coronavirus pandemic. We've got, you know, we've got rising infection rates, hospitals filling up, um, uh, you know, warnings that it could be a really dire uh, winter yeah. here in St. Louis and, and across, the, across the country. I, I think uh, it's, you know, it's, it's uh, going to be really important as we get this political uncertainty resolved, uh, focus will return to, to how we're, how we're dealing with the pandemic. And, and obviously, you know, Biden would be uh, more amenable to lockdowns of some reason than, than Trump would. You know, on, on the state, you know, the Parsons control of the governor's mansion means that there will be right. no state mandates locking down. Uh, it's possible the county and the city uh, may do it locally. Um, I don't know. Right, no, it's clear that, that that'll that'll remain a you know a local uh, a local issue in in uh, in Missouri. Uh, I you know I don't know about about lockdowns, but we're clearly going to need some you know some more uh, more restrictions to 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 uh, to beat this thing. Well, by by lockdowns, I mean perhaps a statewide mask mandate, which now mm -hmm. obviously will not happen. Uh, limitations on restaurants, not completely locking them down, not going back to stay-at-home orders, but uh, but but increased regulation designed to keep people from close contact with each other. That's what I mean. Yeah, but uh, you know, in the midst of all this uncertainty, I you know, I I tell people that the kind of the the fundamentals of the economy are are pretty good. I think we get we get through this. Uh, it, yeah, it, of course, it makes a difference who's president and who controls uh, the Senate and the and the House, but it, only at only at the margin. I think um, you know the the, uh, the 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 tweaks that either side is 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 going to make in tax policy or or, or trade policy they matter. But uh, you know the fact that the fact that the market is up in the face of uncertainty should tell you that uh, the the belief is we've got. You know, we've got some pretty strong fundamentals that will, you know, yeah. when when we when we come out of this and, and have a uh, have a winner, uh, kind of the economy will move on, move ahead. That that's absolutely true. The truth is that uh, government has influence on the economy, but doesn't control it. Really, the economy runs itself. 